We're back again with Fred Garza Guzman. Hi, Fred. Hi, how are you? We're doing great. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for um, consenting to do this story about some of the interesting people who were buried here in San Fernando, number one. And I'm going to get a shot of her name. Yeah, and so this is Ignacia Cortez. Uh huh. Stevens. Yeah. Uh, now, Ignacia was a very interesting character in San Antonio history, kind of one of my favorites, uh, because she was actually a madam. You know, a lot of people don't realize that San Antonio had one of the largest red light districts in all of the United States. We're actually um, ranked the third largest in the nation. Of course, the first is New Orleans, Storyville, second is San Francisco, and third is San Antonio. And, and actually, we tie for second place with San Francisco, but I like to joke that we're very humble in San Antonio and we took third place. <laughs> uh, but you know, we, we've had a large red light district here because we actually had, um, uh, we've had military here for a very long time, military training. We've had that infrastructure that's kind of made sense for us to have a red light district, um, just like New Orleans and just like San Francisco, all kind of similar in that. Um, and if you just look, just right beyond here, this is Brian Callahan's grave. And Brian Callahan is really the gentleman that was, uh, the uh, the red or the green light rather to our red light district. He was the person who created it um, through the city council, and we did have prostitution that was pretty much um, legal in San Antonio for for really from the the 1860s all the way to the beginning of the 1900s. And this is one of the most interesting madams that San Antonio ever had. Of course, Ignacia Cortez, she was originally from Mexico. She married very young. She married by the time she was, uh, I believe, 15 years old. Um, and uh, by the time that she was in her early 20s, she really didn't find herself um, working well with that first husband. And so she decided to get a divorce. And that's kind of a big deal. You know, a Catholic woman, a Mexicana, you know, you just did not get these divorces. But it talked a lot about her personality because she did get a divorce. Um, and uh, shortly after her divorce, she's walking down South Flores um, here in San Antonio. And she sees her ex-husband with a brand new woman. And um, she's very upset about it. And her heart hasn't really healed. Um, even though the divorce was mutual, it really wasn't something she was happy with. Um, and she thought it was just so disrespectful uh, for this gentleman to be already with a new woman. And so she had a pocket knife on her and she approached the new woman and the husband and she actually tried to stab this woman to death. Uh, but she was apprehended, nothing happened. But two weeks later, the brand new girlfriend ends up being found dead. Somebody had poisoned her. And all fingers kind of pointed to Ignacia, but there was never enough evidence to ever arrest her or try her or anything like that. A few years later, she finds herself as a madam. Um, and she's working off of Sao Flores. She has a, a big brothel that she is running. Um, and she's running a pretty tight ship. And she's running um, her business to a lot of, of lawyers in town, a lot of influential people in the city of San Antonio. She begins to have an affair with one of these lawyers. Um, and they're falling almost very deeply in love, or at least that's what Ignacia felt, feels, that she's falling um, very much in love. Um, however, that uh, doesn't quite work out because this lawyer is also having another affair on top of the affair that he's having with her. Ignacia finds out she's really upset. She's pretty much heartbroken. She sends all of the, uh, all of the women working in her brothel out for the day and the lawyer and her are alone together. And somehow, mysteriously, uh, this lawyer ends up dead. And of course, they're the only two in the house. And so Ignacia is said to be the guilty party and she is arrested. She is put on trial, but supposedly there's not enough evidence to acquit her. And the sheriff at the time is helping her with all of this. His, uh, he has a, a pivotal role in this because she is acquitted of this crime and she is found uh, uh, not guilty. Um, and it's interesting because that sheriff that helped her ended up becoming um, her third husband. His, he was a Stevens, and so you'll see that Stevens down here. Um, and he was also, uh, he ended up being a, uh, uh, a person that was dealing with prohibition. And he was, uh, he was an officer working prohibition cases in the San Antonio area. And he ended up um, years later being gunned down after a prohibition raid. And he ended up dying at Santa Rosa Hospital. Uh, but it is a very interesting thing. She was a fiery character, um, definitely in her life, surrounded by controversy of several different murders. But 
she was a woman that really kind of stood up for a lot of the, uh, the, the people who were working in this adult entertainment business and making sure they had a safe place um, and standing her ground very firmly on that. So I think it's so cool that, of course, she's buried right in front of uh, uh, Brian Callahan, who, of course, uh, created our Red Light District, but was often seen as a very controversial character because it was very much understood that the reason why he had approved a red light district here in San Antonio is because there was a lot of personal money for him involved um, and he was able to make quite a profit off of the red light district here in the city. Interesting. Yeah. And they really weren't friends during their lifetimes, were no, they? No, so it's so cool that <laughs> they're buried right next to each other. It's just kind of an interesting thing that goes to show you that you can be buried around sinners and saints and it is still such a, a beautiful place here in the city, um, even though we have such controversial figures buried so close to one another. Interesting, yes. And there are both sinners and saints buried in this cemetery. Sure. Uh, you, you told me a large number of Ursuline Academy yes. uh, nuns were buried the here. There are nuns that are buried here. We have several um, founding um, members of the, the Texas Declaration of Independence that are buried here. Um, we also have many priests that are buried here that have served all over um, the, the Diocese of San Antonio. Um, we actually have, um, you know, people who were at the Battle of the Alamo that are actually buried right here at San Fernando Number. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Fred, thank you so much for yeah. meeting with me this thank morning. You. You're always a wealth of information and Again, the name of your business is? Curious Twins Paranormal. Fantastic. Yeah. And everybody can find you on? Uh, yeah. On Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can always visit us at CuriousTwins.com. Fabulous. And although you're not giving public tours. We are doing private tours and we are doing um, customized private tours for people. Um, it's a really safe way to get a tour. Um, we make sure that we, uh, we utilize proper safety and we definitely limit even our private tours to just eight people. Fantastic. Yeah. I hope you all have a fabulous afternoon and thank Thanks. you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Bye.